I want to know about your life story. I want to know how you became critical of Israel, given your past, given your parents. I, I'd love to learn that story and the point for you at which you realized that you are not as big of a fan of Israel as you, you thought you were. I disappoint you because uh, there is no point in which it happened. It's an ongoing process which lasts for decades and decades and decades. The key of everything is me starting to travel to the occupied territories quite incidentally without any purposes, just as a journalist, just to see what's going on there. I was a kind of a peacenik or a leftist, but very strong Zionist and very... Really a good boy, Tel Aviv, as I always say. Uh, I served in the army. I, I, I worked with Shimon Peres for four years. I was his aim and spokesperson. I, I did all the right things until I started to realize how horrible is the occupation and how much the occupation is defining the moral and political profile of Israel more than anything else. And then it was an ongoing process, which, by the way, goes until this very moment. It's not like I'm in the same place. Five years ago, I was in a different place. What did you see at first that made you realize that maybe Israel isn't what you thought it was? No, it's a combination of small details. So what were some of those details? First, there was an old woman in the West Bank that settlers or soldiers, I don't remember now, uprooted all her old olive trees. And she was totally helpless, and nobody would come to help her, and nobody would investigate who did it, and nobody would punish them. And I looked at her, and, and that was the beginning. I was very naive then, and very brainwashed, like all the other Israelis, and very Zionists. It didn't happen one day. It's an ongoing process, and then I supported the two-state solution, which still leaves a place for a Jewish state, which still leaves a place of being Zionist, but then I realized that Israel did anything possible to prevent this solution. And then I realized that the two-state solution is not there. And I thought, okay, so what's now? I'll continue to speak two-state solution, two-state solution, like all the world speaks, knowing that it will never happen. I mean, it's totally tasteless. And then I said, okay, so there is only one solution, the one-state solution. And then I had two very interesting trips which influenced me a lot to South Africa, when I realized that the unthinkable can happen because South Africa, if I would have told you in the late 80s that South Africa is going to become what it is, you laugh. There was no chance for it. And it happened, and South Africa has so many problems now. But it's a more just place. And I realized that there is no other solution, but but democracy, but equality, there is no other solution. And, and then I realized that Zionism is against it, because Zionism is very clearly against it. 